Spider-Man Web of Shadows is a terrible and dumb game, and if you like this game, then we need to prevent you from voting and breeding. Why? Because Spider-Man Web of Shadows is so terrible that we as a society can use it as a barometer to determine who needs to be weeded out of the collective gene pool and not have any say in society. That's how horribly terrible this game is. But Kirby, you might be asking, why in the world is this game so horribly bad? Well, you're in luck, Space Cadets, because I'm going to tell you all about it. Cut the green screen. Cut the ostentation. Forget the special effects. Larry, shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. All right, look. We're getting real right here, you understand? Cause I'm not happy and I got something to talk about. So we're taking this and we're moving upstairs. So come on, let's go. We're going upstairs, come on, let's do this. Okay, so I was watching a Watch Mojo video the other day and it was top 20 Marvel superhero video games. And to my absolute horror, the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows was number 20. I just, I could not fathom that somebody would think that that was a quality game. I mean... Ah! I can't do this! I mean, the game, the idea that the game was even on a list like this, on any good games list, or was even close to a good games list, was insane to me. I mean, on this game list, uh, Spider-Man Web of Shadows was on it, but the PS1 Spider-Man Neversoft game wasn't on it. Maximum Carnage wasn't on it. Uh, freaking, uh, the first Spider-Man movie game wasn't on it. How do you stop street crime? You throw cars at it. I'm Spider-Man, obey the law. With great power comes great responsibility. I mean, don't get me wrong, Watch Mojo is not the arbiter of all things, but just the idea that this game would even remotely come close to a best games list fills me with bile. Like, it's disgusting the idea that there would be people out there who would have reverie for this pile of shit. First off, you smell like death. Second, you look like one of those emo kitties they got all over the internet gibbering on about how hard their life is when they've never even known true pain. Oh my god, you have a MyFace page, don't you, dork? So after watching this video, I decided I would go and I would purchase a copy so that I could rip it a new asshole here on the internet with all of you. And uh, when I did, I found out that Spider-Man Web of Shadows is a $90 game on the PlayStation 3. That blew my mind. What that means is that this game is sought after enough that it would be $90. How could anyone like this piece of crap? Now you might be saying to yourself, come on Kirby, this is just an over-exaggeration uh, for the sake of a video that you're putting on the internet. No, this is me downplaying my initial reaction. Because my initial reaction was much, much larger and more full of disgust and repulsion and hatred for humanity. Because you see, the truth is, is that deep down inside, I really am a huge petty asshole who cannot allow other people to like things that I hate, no matter how benign they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows, I am going to play it, and I am going to rip it a new asshole. And I want you to know that my criticism of this game vicariously is a judgment on you as a person for liking it. So, anyway, let's get started, and what are we starting with? We're starting with the cover of the game. Look at the cover of this game. It is a plain white background with Spider-Man on it. His arms are crossed, and in one of his fists is Venom, and in his other fist is Wolverine. And this, these two different characters are supposed to represent two different choices, one good and one evil. The problem with this is that Wolverine is an anti-hero, and Venom is an anti-hero so yeah way to go oh and uh it's really dull and this title web of shadows that's stupid that is a stupid stupid title 
Now, to be fair, I'm going to highlight the good parts of this game first, okay? You ready for this? Let's go. One, the web strike. This is a cool little attack that allows you to bounce around between enemies and do damage to them. It's cool, it's fun, and it's too bad that this never returned for any of the other games in any other Spider-Man form. I don't know if what I just said made any other sense. Too bad this didn't show up in any other Spider-Man games. There's one mission in the game where you use it to jump around a city block, bouncing from enemy to enemy, taking them out one at a time. It's pretty slick and probably the most memorable part of the game. When the web strike is powered up, if you can push square or X at the right time, Spidey will do more damaging moves with it. Hitting the buttons at exactly the right time can be incredibly fulfilling when playing the game. Good thing about Spider-Man Web of Shadows number two, Wolverine's Quiz. In the game, you fight Wolverine and he periodically stops to quiz you on Marvel history to make sure that you're the real you and not a symbiote-controlled human being. I liked this part of the game because it's the first and only time that my extensive knowledge of Marvel Comics history has been useful ever in my life. I was pretty proud to answer all of the questions that Wolverine had successfully. Truly, it was a highlight of my adult years. The good thing is about Spider-Man Web of Shadows number three, ripping Wolverine in half. for this okay now it's on to the bad stuff all right bad thing about this game number one the web strike now wait a minute Kirby you might be saying you just said this was a good thing in the game now you're saying it's a bad thing what gives man well I'll tell you what gives space cadets the web strike is fun sure but once you get the web strike, it's pretty much going to be the only attack you use or have to use for the entire rest of the game. Every boss fight is simply going to be you using the web strike over and over and over again. What makes it so good to use is that you go into this slow motion thing and if your spidey sense goes off indicating that the enemy is going to counter your web strike, you can immediately cancel the attack and then immediately use the web strike all over again until eventually you get a clear shot at your enemy. And using the web strike in the air puts you out of reach of any other enemies that could potentially do you damage. The web strike is a major crutch that you will be leaning on throughout the entirety of the game. Bad thing about Spider-Man Web of Shadows number two, everything else. Okay, let's start from the beginning and we'll go from there. So the game starts you out with this awesome cutscene. Oh man, bro. This is so deep, bro. This is drama, bro. You got the slow-mo, bro? And that moonlight song, bro? Bro, that moonlight song on the piano makes this just so dramatic. There's clearly people dying all around him and he's doing nothing to help them. So you end up running around the chaos-filled streets of Manhattan fighting Venom things, your main weapon being your spider kick of ultimate doom. Seriously, nothing can stand before your all-powerful kick of total annihilation. It decimates all enemies with the unparalleled strength of a spider. After you beat up some zombies, a ship crashes, and then you save a guy, and of course you save a guy because if you don't, you'd be just another asshole in a leotard. After you save the guy, you have a panicked search for Mary Jane, and this is where the first major problem comes into the game. Our protagonist. First of all, Peter Parker sounds like a child and a whiny child at that. Where is Cage in his search party? Where is MJ? Where's Cage in his search party? Civilian volunteers! Pretty redhead, arm in a cast! His voice and character are enough to make you want to strangle him through the screen. Now this Spider-Man character in this particular game, I don't really consider Spider-Man. This is the Spider-Man of the mid-2000s and beyond. He's just an annoying jerk and everybody hates him. Like really, he can save countless people, tons of S.H.I.E.L.D. soldiers, beat up all the bad guys, do all the missions for everyone, and everyone still treats Spider-Man like he's a bitch. A 
What do you want, Spider-Man? How about some fucking respect? So eventually you run into Mary Jane and Luke Cage and just... Just look at how he squeezed into this tiny little car. That's... That's ridiculous. Who... Who's the jerk that authorizes crap? Spidey whines some more, and then Black Cat shows up, and we go back in time to the beginning of the story. <laughs> Turns out you're getting your ass beat by Venom at the beginning of this story, and, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Who, who designed this character? This, this isn't Venom. This isn't Venom at all. What the hell is going on? All of a sudden, a piece of symbiote comes loose and attaches to Peter. Peter throws some cars at Venom, and then the fight is over. Mary Jane! Peter? Peter? Don't give away his secret identity! You follow the paramedics to a hospital, and as soon as you get there, a gang war erupts out front. And it's up to you, Spider-Man, to stop it! You! Stop those lunatics! Uh, yeah, okay. You know, if I let this whole thing play out, the problem will solve itself. You fight the bad guys and Luke Cage shows up to help you. Really, it's more like you're helping him. I mean, he's a nine foot tall bulletproof dude built like a brick shithouse. I mean, what the fuck is a spider strength infused guy from Queens and a leotard gonna do to help a bulletproof giant dude? Now, the first opening section of the game is just one long, boring tutorial. Luke Cage gives you missions. The first mission you have is to stop some gang members. And dear God, is this what gang members look like in 2008? You're gonna pay for messing up my boy, spider freak! I mean, jeez, just, just look at them. They're so intimidating. Like, I'm shaking in my booties. Like, how are, how are kids gonna play this game? I mean, they're probably terrified to have to come up against these dangerous-looking gang members. I get bored with the missions in this first part of the game, so I just stop and kick around some cars for a while. After you beat up enough bad guys, Luke Cage teaches you how to use the web strike attack. And when you fail the web strike, this is what happens. That was close. Try again a little bit later. <laughs> No respect. No respect at all. Now, this tutorial on how to use the web strike is fairly easy, but it was made all the harder for me on this playthrough because the game froze up on me, and I had to do it all over again. Bullshit. This is all bullshit. After you encounter a character, they then become a part of your team, and you can call them into battle whenever you need help. Such characters as Luke Cage here. I never found a use for any of these characters to help me, and I never really called them into battle. I probably did when I first played this game back in the day, but uh, I certainly don't remember it. It must have been just, just really, really disappointing. It's, it's a pretty useless feature, really, and absolutely not necessary for beating this game. Most of the beginning has Luke Cage teaching you all your powers, like the spider sense, as the two of you clean up Harlem and try to prevent the gangs from fighting. Eventually, you have to protect a gas station from cars full of gang members who are trying to destroy it. And let me tell you, saving this gas station, it is so difficult. I mean, holy lord. Like, algebra isn't this difficult. Quantum mechanics isn't this difficult. Changing my transmission isn't this difficult. Like, this is just OMG, just the hardest darn level ever in the history of levels. Oh my gosh, just look at it. Now, let me take a moment to talk to you about the core missions you're going to be enjoying while you play this masterpiece of gaming bliss. There are essentially three types of missions in the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows. One, the story missions. These are unique missions that sometimes have unique elements and move the plot forward. Two, the protect this thing from bad guys mission. There is a thing. Enemies want to destroy said thing. It's your job to protect said thing. You do this type of mission a lot in the game. It's really, really dull. Mission type number three are the destroy slash stop slash find and destroy X number of enemies or machines 
or crimes. These missions are more commonly referred to as padding. They are plentiful in the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Basically, these missions entail you swinging around the city looking for bad guys to kill or machines to destroy. This usually means that you swing around the city, find what you're looking for, kill it or destroy it, and then swing away. Then, you immediately circle back around. Usually, if you circle back around, the thing you have to destroy or kill has respawned, so you can kill it all over again. Repeat this until the mission is over. These missions are plentiful throughout the game. If you remove all of these types of missions, the game would be like two hours long. The worst mission of this type comes towards the end of the game, when you have to hunt down 30 vulture venom spawning pod things. These are pods that spawn the symbiote vulture enemies in the game. You have to swing around the city, find, and then destroy 30 of these damn pods. It takes forever, and it took me longer because the goddamn game froze up on me. God damn it, again, again with this. I could be, I could go out and uh, go to parties and socialize, but no, I gotta sit here and deal with people's incompetence over and over again. So, after you save the gas station, you have some tedious find bad guys and hit them missions, and then you go to set up a meeting with one of the gang members to facilitate negotiating p peace between the gangs. Thing is, they've agreed to a parlay. What are you talking about? I'm saying that you, the leader of the Rolling Sevens, and Mr. Cage are gonna have a little sit down. A little chat. What? These are criminals. Don't have them negotiate a peace deal. Take them to jail. Why is this guy 10 feet tall? The meeting is set up, but drama occurs. Guys in tech suits show up to wreck the party. This is the part where you do that really cool thing where you jump around from enemy to enemy, and honestly, it's it's really cool. Like, I have to say, this part of the game is probably the highlight of the whole... Oh, shit! Gotta... Gotta... Gotta remember to buy gum. Oh my god. Thank god this advertisement was right here in the middle of this awesome action sequence. That that it just it's there to remind me. I gotta I gotta fucking buy gum. After you take out the high-tech guys, Luke Cage's part of the game is over. Time to move on. And what Spidey decides to do is find out where the guys in the tech suits came from. So he goes to Wilson Fisk's place because Fisk is the only guy on Earth in the Marvel Universe who could possibly have dudes in tech suits. There, Spider-Man finds Black Cat leaving Fisk's building. So he gives chase. And I have to say that Black Cat is, um, um, well modeled and designed. After this, the game pokes you in the eye by teasing Hobgoblin. But nope, it's just some jerks on orange gliders and shit. We just can't have the Hobgoblin, can we? We just can't have nice things. We always... It's always gotta be the same scorpion, vulture, rhino. You beat up a bunch of tech guys, then Moon Knight shows up for all of two seconds and then runs off like a jerk. You beat up Black Cat, you beat her pretty bad too, I gotta say. I mean, like, you just, you really just kick her ass. Then you go and you confront her, and then all of a sudden they throw quick time events at you. And boy oh boy do they like to throw quick time events at you. It is so damn painful, but I should have known QTEs were in this game. It was made in 2008. The game, however, doesn't throw them at you all the time. They throw them at you just enough of the time to completely catch you off guard and kill you right away. It's such delightful game design. Like, why did quick time events ever go out of style? Wait a minute, wait. What the hell was that? Did you see that? Let's take a look at that one more time. What? First, they turn Spider-Man into a whiny kid, and now this. What? 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 So, you end up saving Black Cat, and then you swing away, and, uh... Wait, 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 wait. Let's do that again. Gotcha! Beautiful! So you save Black Cat and swing away. She gets free and runs. So you follow her and confront her for a second time. Of course, because the swinging sucks in this game, I have a hard time getting to the top of the building. She says she's on to some sort of case involving Fisk. Then she tries to seduce you. Be with me. Together we can be whatever we want. Free from want. Free from responsibility. Free to have fun. You do like fun, don't you? 
Okay, so let me talk to you about the big selling point of this game. It's the reason that Spider-Man has his fists crossed on the cover. In this game, you get to choose between being a good Spider-Man or being a bad Spider-Man. Good Spider-Man is represented by the red suit, and bad Spider-Man is represented by the black suit. If you use one suit more than the other, the cutscenes in the game will change with Spider-Man either being the whiny Boy Scout in the red suit or the whiny jerk in the black suit. To switch between suits during game Gameplay, you need only push in the left thumbstick. Whether you're more good or bad will be indicated by the spidey face in the bottom right hand corner of the HUD. You also get these big moral choices during the game, which generally means you either do a good or a bad thing. The choices are never really interesting except for when you get to rip Wolverine in half. Kill you for this. <laughs> Oh, that never gets old. Using either the black suit or the red suit will make a difference in your fighting style as well. The red suit is more geared towards web attacks, and the black suit is more geared towards strong heavy attacks. How you unlock and upgrade your attacks is with a skill tree found in the menu. Now, I've already told you that once you fully upgrade the web strike, that's all you're going to be using for the vast majority of the game, and frankly, that's mostly all I ever used during the main game, with the exception of like the main combat. Combo. Eventually I did upgrade the main combo to expedite killing enemies, and I did fully upgrade some of the tendril attacks for the black suit, but that was primarily because the tendril attacks hit multiple enemies at once, and I upgraded these attacks because the combat in the game is repetitive and boring, and upgrading these attacks helped me get through the game a lot faster. Outside of using the web strike, the combat is dull at best, and on top of that, this game was made in the mid-2000s, which means that if you get too low on health, you can just hide in a corner and your health will recharge, making every enemy encounter just a chore to complete until it's done. The game doesn't provide enough of a challenge to encourage me to use all of my moves, nor does it punish me for not using all of my moves. You have air combat, which is somewhat satisfying because it does require some timing to do correctly, but again, you only have to do the same air combos over and over, and the game never tries to force you into using any of your other moves. Ground combat is dull, and it's just better to web strike enemies from the air anyway. You're completely immune to attack pretty much from this angle. Uh, you can fight on walls also in this game, but that's just as dull as ground-based combat. I mean, it's an interesting idea, but it's got an asterisk that's just, who cares? And if anyone is wondering, when Black Cat tries to seduce me, I choose the path that uh, has Black Cat seducing me. Because if Black Cat is trying to seduce you, why in the world would you not want Black Cat to seduce you? After that, you have to go out and defeat X number of bad guys a couple of times to get tech parts to help you locate where they're coming from. Then you protect the courthouse from a bunch of tech guys and some really giant mechs that come in to destroy it. After this, it's off to the place where the technology the tech guys use comes from. And wouldn't you know it, you find Adrian Toomes is building the weapons and suits for the bad guys. A boss fight ensues, and it would have been a good boss fight if not for the fact that the game froze up on me. Oh, what a surprise! And since this is the third time I've done this joke, I will take a moment just to say that this game is really, really glitchy. You'll get voices cutting out and characters clipping through everything, and this game shouldn't be called Web of Shadows, it should be called Web of Screen Tearing, or Web of Total and Complete Incompetence, or Web of I hope all those bastards who made this game are freaking fired. The Vulture Fight is pretty good. It's cool how you have to jump from lesser enemy to lesser enemy to reach him and beat the crap out of him. Once you defeat him, you can now summon him as an ally, and yes, you heard that correctly, you can summon villains you fight as allies in the game. Story-wise, this is rationalized because there's this great big threat coming and all the villains have to team up with all the good guys to stop it. Gameplay-wise, this gives you more people to call into battle and depending upon who you choose to call into battle will be another factor in determining whether you're a good Spider-Man or a bad Spider-Man. After beating Vulture, you get to do some more busy work destroying X number of things, but then all of a sudden... This is great because now I get to actually fulfill my fantasy of just chucking people off of buildings. Me. They're not normal. 
Do I really need to criticize this? Yes, the plot thickens, so it's time to investigate. You do more padding missions where you just beat stuff up, and then you get attacked by Wolverine who thinks you're one of the symbiotes because you have one on you. You play that quiz game that makes me feel really, really smart, and then Wolverine takes you out to teach you how to detect symbiotes masquerading as people. All right, there are several in that group right there. Right where? Right there, you blind fuck! After this, you speculate that Venom is behind the whole debacle, and so you set out to find him, and lo and behold, you do find him. Thus begins one of the longest boss fights in the history of bad game design. I mean, holy crap. You fight Venom in the streets, and chase him down, and fight him some more, then chase him down, and fight him some more, then fight him in a back alley, and then chase him down, and then you fight him some more, and so on and so forth. This was an unnecessarily long fight. It did not need to be designed like this. And in the end, Venom just runs away, and then you, you strike a pose as Spider-Man, and that's it. You game. After you fight Venom, you do even more padding and hunt down these symbiote pods and destroy them. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up and starts quarantining people. And then... What? Come on, man. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up and starts quarantining people. And then, when things couldn't get any worse, Electro shows up, shouting about his sister and electrocuting people. So you chase him, and you fight him, and damn it, it's the same as the Venom fight. You chase him forever, then you fight him in some alley somewhere, and then you chase him all over again. I just did this in this game. It wasn't fun when I did it before, and it's not fun now. The only difference is that this fight ends with a quick time event. And then Black Widow shows up to yell at Spider-Man. You are under arrest. So I'm gonna have to stop right here. Just take a look at Black Widow for a second. Does anyone remember this haircut from the mid 2000s? This haircut right here? This haircut used to be really, really big in the mid 2000s and late 2000s incidentally. Like it has long bangs in the front and short hair in the back. And then women who used to have this hair, they would like use gel to spike the hair on the back of the head. Does anyone remember this ugly, divorced, middle-aged woman haircut? Who is the designer and artist who chose to give Black Widow this particular haircut? What the hell were they thinking? So Black Widow shows up and yells at Spider-Man, and then Electro gets his own symbiote, and then he explodes. Black Widow says Spider-Man is under arrest, and then the entire game drops the storyline. The mission ends, and you start the next mission on a rooftop. Really, it, it doesn't show Spidey's reaction to his potentially being arrested. We don't see him flee. The story just simply cuts out, and then we join Spidey on a rooftop. You are under arrest. From here on out, the story gets really dull and the game starts padding things way out, way more. You go to the bridge to find that S.H.I.E.L.D. is quarantining the city. Fisk is there, fat jokes are made, and then everyone starts teaming up with everyone else to stop all the symbiotes. They come up with a plan, etc, etc. And part of that plan requires everyone to break the Tinkerer out of jail, which leads to a part in the game where you get to ride on Rhino. It's really clunky and it could be fun, but it's really more cumbersome to ride him than not, and this this is primarily due to the fact that the developers had no idea what they were doing. Once you get the Tinkerer out of jail, everyone comes up with a plan, and the Tinkerer goes over those plans with everyone. To complete this project, I require the following. Full access to the facilities here at Fisk Industries, $25 million in cash, a full pardon, and this castle in Italy with this woman from my favorite tool calendar waiting by the pool. <laughs> Now after this, the game falls into tedium and padding, 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 and more padding. You spend much of your time doing meaningless tasks, destroy X number of things, or escort X number of things. They do give you these missions where a dropship goes into the city to pick up groups of civilians, and it sucks. You see, these civilians are holed up someplace, and a dropship comes down to pick them up, but the dropship is far away, so the people have to run to it. While they run to it, you have to protect them from symbiotes who are coming to take them away. Sounds pretty standard, right? The problem with this is that the civilians will only run to the dropship one at a time. It takes forever, and by the time I was halfway through the first of these missions, I said, screw it, 
and I started picking up the civilians and just taking them to the ships. It was freaking annoying. During this time, you do, however, get a couple of good boss fights. You fight alongside Wolverine at a church and can hit the church's bell to stun enemies. You also fight a symbiote Wolverine. The fight is just like every other fight in the game, just use the web strike over and over again. However, this is the part where you get to rip Wolverine in half. Mwah. You also fight Electro in his symbiote form. It's a pretty big fight, and again, just use the web strike to get through it. I do have to say that although the boss fights are all really samey because you only ever need to use the web strike, they are pretty big and ambitious in their execution. I mean, sometimes they do take up entire city blocks, and the final fight takes up all of the airspace over Manhattan. I mean, it's pretty ambitious. Like, somebody had big dreams for this game just failed in the execution. During this section of the game, there's actually a mission where you do have to protect Stark Tower from being attacked by zombies. And you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, Kirby, those are not zombies, those are symbiotes. And to be honest, technically, you're right. But really, they're not. They're zombies. I mean, look at these enemies. These enemies are clearly zombies, and Venom walks like a zombie at the beginning of the game. They're zombies. Also, the game straight up calls them zombies. No joke. Spider-Man Web of Shadows is actually a zombie game in disguise. Can you freaking believe that? Also, this mission where you're protecting Stark Tower is dumb because the zombies only come at you like two or three at a time. I mean, what do they intend on doing? Scuffing the masonry? Now it's at this point that I would like to bring up another thing about this game that is very important to recognize. Now, this game has what I like to refer to as mid-2000s-itis, which is the inflammation of the mid-2000s. There are several things in this game that date it. One, the recharging health. This is distinctly something from the 2000s. It came into fashion with Halo, and it went out somewhere around 2013. And if there are games still being made with this today, what the fuck is wrong with you? Two, there's the quick time events. It's hard to pin down when this quick time event crap started. I believe it started with Resident Evil 4, which, if that's true, then that game truly is evil. But I, I think it probably really started back with Shenmue, and then it was made popular by God of War and Resident Evil 4. Like, I do remember it being in that game Headhunter, and, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Quick time events sucked. Three, zombies. Zombies were one of the main highlights in the mid to late 2000s. You couldn't poop without having to deal with a zombie. And finally, number four. Black Widow's ugly ass haircut. I can't believe this ugly ass haircut will be commemorated in time forever because of this crappy game. Truly unbelievable. Later in the game, you meet up with Luke Cage and Mary Jane, who has pretty much been absent from the entire game and completely neglected by her superhero boyfriend while this citywide catastrophe is happening. Anyway, you meet up with them, and now Mary Jane is sporting a cast and a shotgun, and it's at this point in the game when I realize that all the female characters in the game have the same character model. <laughs> You escort a convoy of buses and cars from Harlem to Battery Park and the safety of the S.H.I.E.L.D. base around Stark Tower. You know that base that S.H.I.E.L.D. couldn't protect without Spidey's help a mission or two ago? Yeah, that's where the convoy is headed where you're taking all these innocent, helpless civilians. The convoy mission is long and boring, and since we're on the subject of crossing the city, for a city under siege from what amounts to an alien invasion or zombie apocalypse, the streets are pretty freaking empty. It's just dull. There should be corpses in the streets, women screaming because they can't find their children, flaming rubble on every street corner. It should just be madness everywhere. But it's not madness. It's just empty. As empty as my life. You get another boss fight, this time with Black Cat who has her own symbiote. Oh holy joy. It's the same fight as your first fight with her, except Mary Jane is there now pumping shells into bad guys. Then Vulture betrays everyone. He has his own symbiote and a giant black booger is stuck onto the side of the Empire State Building right where your anti-venom machine is. The fight with Vulture is actually pretty good. It's this really big fight high in the air with all kinds of enemies and ships shooting and exploding around you. 
You beat Vulture. He tries to seduce you, but since I don't swing that way, the game indicates that I'm the red Spider-Man and I murder all the symbiotes in the city, killing off my symbiote as well. Now I can't use it. You think it's over, but no. Venom's on the shield helicarrier with a bunch of other symbiotes that didn't die from the big machine. You fight a giant Venom thing that's kind of cool, but the whole thing ends in a quick time event, which is very, very anticlimactic. Brock! Eddie! Eddie, I want to talk to you! The real battle! <laughs> the helicarrier crashes, the game is over. Thank God. This whole game is pretty bad. There are some things I didn't touch on, like for instance side missions, which are just more of those padding missions. You don't have to do them. You get dialogue trees where you can talk to other characters about other topics going on in the game, but all the characters are annoying and completely out of character. Spider-Man especially. So talking to anyone about anything other than what you need to know to do your mission is like asking to be maced, only instead of being maced in the face, you're maced in your soul. Swinging in this game is bad as well and not fun in any conceivable way. Uh, you can run up walls, but I couldn't figure it out. I don't know why I couldn't figure it out. I had a hard time making it work. That could be on me, but I'm still gonna blame the developers, because, I mean, you know, if it looks like a duck, it smells like a duck, then it's probably incompetence. Um, I didn't care for this game. The game is ugly. If it were a dog, I would shave its butt and teach it to walk backwards. Well, that is my review for Spider-Man Web of Shadows. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's not a good game. I can't believe some people like this game. It is utterly baffling, etc, etc. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to get more reviews, essays, mini documentaries on video games. Thank you, and have a nice day. Hey, I'd like to thank my lone Patreon member, uh, Douglas Newell. Thank you, Doug, for your support. I really appreciate it. If anyone out there would like to support the channel, please check out my Patreon. There is a link in the description. Thank you.